In this video, I'll be showing you around the meal planning template that I've created in Notion. It makes it super easy to plan meals, save recipes, view your virtual pantry, and even comes with a dynamic shopping list. This template is available on my store, so if you do want to grab the template and start using it straight away, then click the link in the description box. Otherwise, in the rest of this video, I'll be showing you how it works and hopefully giving you some inspiration. So firstly, here we are on the homepage. Now the homepage just has an overview of a couple of the sections that you'll find over here in the menu. So the main things that I've pulled through on the homepage are the recipes database and the shopping list. So these both have their own separate pages in the menu, as you can see. So over on their individual pages, there is a bit more functionality than on the homepage, but on the homepage, I just wanted to provide an overview of some of the more important things that you'd want to access all the time. So as you can see, this is the recipes database. So you'll see a card here for each of the recipes that you've added into the system and you can add the meal type, you can add some tags and you can even give it a star rating as well. And if you want to actually view the recipe or add the steps for the recipe, you can just click on the card. So let's go with banana bread. And as you can see here, you can write in the recipe steps over here. I've also set up a couple of alternate views on here. So if you click on here, you can actually go to the favorite recipes tab. And this view is just being filtered based on the favorite recipe tag here. So if you tag a recipe as favorite, it will show up on this favorite recipes tab. So let's just go back on the all recipes. And these actually show up in alphabetical order. So it's really easy to find what you're looking for. And you can also use the little search button here to actually search for something. So say I want to find my spaghetti bolognese recipe, I can just write that in here. Over here is your shopping list. So I'm gonna explain a little bit later how you can actually form this shopping list. It is actually a clever interactive shopping list that links up with this ingredients page but the key thing to know is it just works as you would imagine you just check items off once you've bought them it just works like a standard shopping list so that is everything that you'll find on the homepage. So now we're gonna go through the different pages within the menu. And I just want to mention as well that this menu does appear on every single page in the planner. So it's really easy to navigate between the different pages. So I'm gonna skip the start here page for now because that is all about setting up the template for the first time. So let's start on the meal planner page. Now the meal planner page is as it sounds, it's where you can actually plan out your meals each week. So each week you'll be able to add one of these toggles. So let's just open up this one that I've added in as an example. And as you can see, there is a column for each day of the week and you can actually plan in your breakfast, your lunch and your dinner. Now one of the clever things about this template is this actually connects up to your recipes page so when you add a recipe into the database you can actually select it to add it in for the various different meals and this also works great for meal preppers because I've added this checkbox here so you can check off once it's been prepped. This number here will also show you how many calories you're going to consume that day so that's based on the calories for each of these so when you add a recipe into the system it will ask you to write in approximately how many calories in one portion of that meal. And that's what it's using to calculate the total calories here. So you don't have to input this yourself. It's automatically being pulled through based on the recipes in the recipes database. And you can scroll along this way to see all of the different things that you've added for each day of the week. Now, this is the board view. So it's an easy way to actually view the meals that you've planned for the week. But I've also set up this plan tab as well, which just shows the same information, but as a table view, just because I think it's a little bit easier to actually add in the different meals in this view. Now, you can actually generate a new version of this template every single week, as you can see with this toggle. So to generate a new one, all you need to do is click the plus new week button. And if you just give it a second, it's gonna generate a brand new version of that template. So this is what it would look like. So you can simply insert the dates in here. So this one would be, let's just say 11th of March. And if you open the toggle, you'll then find a blank template. So if I head over to the plan tab, I could then click on this box here next to breakfast to pick a meal from my recipes database. So let's say I go for Spanish omelette. And as you can see, it's automatically pulling through the calories for me. If I add another one on here, it's doing the same thing and it will add them up here. And on the plan tab, you'll find all of the different days of the week and these handy toggles for you to open and close as well. And if we just go back to the this week view, as you can see, this now appears on the board. So that's how the meal planner works. So you can simply just add a new week every single week to plan a new week of meals. Next we're going to head over to the recipes page. So the recipes page works kind of like a virtual recipe book. So this is the all recipes tab which will list every single recipe that you've got in the system and these are sorted in alphabetical order. So as you can see on these cards it'll tell you the name of the recipe. You can select the meal type. You can add recipe tags and you can also select a star rating out of five and this is the calories per portion of the meal. As I showed you earlier if you ever want to actually view the steps 
steps for the recipe, you can simply click on the card and it will open up a page, which is where you can actually input these steps for the recipe. And I've also set up a couple of alternate views, as you can see. The first one is recipe by type, which is just sorting your recipes based on the meal type. So as you can see, there's a different column here for each different meal type. So let's say you just want to find an easy dinner recipe. You can come on here and just look in the dinner column and scroll down to see all of the dinner recipes that you have. And if you scroll to the side, you can also see the other options. I've also got a favorites tab. So this is similar to what we had on the homepage. So it will just pull through any recipes that have been tagged as favorite. And I've also added a table view as well, because I know that sometimes it's just easier to view everything in a table like this. So this will just show all of your recipes and all of the different properties. And we've also got this ingredients property as well, which I'm going to show you how that works now. So if you want to add a new recipe, I've added this add new recipe toggle here. So what you'll want to do is simply open up the toggle. You'll click on the plus new button, and that's going to add a new row into the database. So you can start by just typing in the name of the recipe. So let's say in this case, we're going to add some chocolate chip cookies. You can then click here to select the meal type. So these are the different options that we have. And you can actually select as many of these meal types as you like, because some won't fall into just one category. It might be something that you could have for dinner or lunch. In this case, I'm just going to put this one as dessert and also snack. Next, you can choose the recipe tags. So I've actually already added quite a few different tags for you to choose from, but feel free to add more. So with the tags, you can select as many as you like. So for the chocolate chip cookies, I'm gonna put that it's vegetarian, it's easy, and it is a favorite. After you've made the recipe, you can give it a rating out of five stars. So this makes it easy just to see the recipes that you particularly love the most. And if there's any recipes that you've added in that you ended up just not really liking, then it's easy to see that you didn't like them. So let's give this one five stars. In this box, you can select the ingredients. now. I have added 163 common ingredients onto the ingredients page and this database actually links up to the ingredients page. So if you click on this box, it's going to bring up all of the different ingredients that I've added into the system, as you can see. So you can simply just search for it by typing in the name. So let's start with chocolate and then I can add that. I might also want to add butter and add that. And let's just do sugar as well. So obviously you'll want to go through and add all of the different ingredients and then they'll be now associated with this recipe. For the calories box, this is completely optional. I've added this in just for people that do want to track calories, but if you're not bothered about calories, then you can either delete this property or just ignore it. But the idea is that you'll put in the amount of calories per portion. So in this case, I probably would just put the amount of calories in one cookie. Let's just say that it's 100 calories. And then if you add this at any point into your meal planner that I showed you just before, it will automatically add that to your total. Now, if you actually want to add the recipe itself you can click the little open button here and that will pop up this little side window here and I've got this little recipe steps area so you can type in your steps you can list the amounts of your ingredients and everything here and if you also want to add a cover photo like I have done for the other recipes you can just hover up at the top and you'll see this little add cover button appear here so I'm going to click on that and as you can see it will automatically add a random cover photo so you'll want to click change cover and you then have a few different options you can either click on upload and upload an image of the recipe you can use the link if you found an image on the internet somewhere you can just paste in the link to the image here and it will automatically upload it for you here or you can also use unsplash which is a free stock photo library this is the option that i use most of the time because it's really quick and easy so i could just type in something like cookie and it will then bring up a ton of amazing stock photos of cookies so let's just go with this one you simply just click it and it will automatically upload it for you so it's a really quick and easy way to add really nice photos to your recipes so let's close this off so once you've filled out the recipe you can close that off and once once you've filled out all of the details in this table, you can click this submit button. It will disappear from this database and we can then close the toggle. And if we have a look now here in our recipes database, here is that new recipe that we've just added. One of the things I love about this virtual recipe book is that it's really easy to find recipes. So as you can imagine, at some point, you're probably going to have a really long list of recipes in this database if you keep adding recipes constantly. So there are actually a few different ways that you can sort and search for different recipes. You can firstly use this little search bar here. So if you click on there it will open up and you can type in a search criteria so if I wanted my Spanish omelette recipe I could just type that in and it would appear I also really love that you can actually type in recipe tags or meal types into here as well so let's just say that I need to cook a vegan meal for my vegan friend I can just type in vegan and anything that has been tagged as vegan will now show up you could also type in something like lunch and only things that have been tagged as lunch will appear so it's a really really handy system so that is the recipes page next we're going to have a look at the ingredients page so the ingredient page is 
is designed to be kind of like a virtual pantry. So the first thing that I'll say is that I have pre-added 163 common ingredients into this database. So you'll already see all of these ingredients pre-added. So the all ingredients tab that we're currently on will simply just show all of the ingredients. So all of those 163 ingredients will show up on this page. Now, the idea is that you'll change the status here from don't need to in stock if it's something that you have in your pantry. And then we have this in stock tab here. So if we go on there, that's only gonna show things that have been tagged as in stock. So these are all of the items that you currently have in your pantry or in your kitchen. And you can also see the quantity of the item that you have as well. Of course, this does take a little bit of upkeep if you constantly want to update how much you have left. So it's not for everybody. You can just delete this property if you don't really care how much of the item you have in stock. But if you do, you can just update this from time to time. So when you first download the template, you'll want to go to the all ingredients tab and just change the status of any items that you currently have to in stock so that they appear on the in stock tab. And you can easily search the database using this. So let's just say that I need to look for mango. I can just type that in here and it will pop up and I can then change the status to in stock. And if you want to change the quantity, you can simply click on the quantity here to input it. But if it's not already got a quantity in it like this one, you might need to click on here to update the quantity here. So let's just say I have 100 grams of this and it will then show up on the card. Now I've also set up a clever shopping list system. So to add an item to your shopping list, you simply just need to click this add to shopping list button. So let's add this to our shopping list. So as you can see, once I did that, it's disappeared from this database. And that's because the status was changed from in stock to add to shopping list. So that is another way that you can add items to your shopping list. You can simply just change the status to add to shopping list and it will disappear from your in stock because it's no longer an in stock item. But the quickest and easiest way to add items to your shopping list is simply just by clicking this add to shopping list button. And I am going to show you the shopping list in a second. I've also set up a table view because again, I know some people like seeing everything in a table view like this. So this just shows all of the ingredients, the quantities, the current status. So whether it's something you don't need, whether you currently have it in stock or whether you want to add it to your shopping list. And as I said, if you click the add to shopping list button, it will automatically change the status for you to add to shopping list. Now, as I said, I did preload this with 163 common ingredients. So you probably don't need to add anything very often, but if you do ever need to add a new ingredient that I've missed, you can simply click the add new ingredient button. So you can simply just write in the name of the ingredient here. You can input the quantity and you can also select the status as well. And if you do want to add one of those cover photos that you've seen on the board, you can simply just click here to add the cover and follow the steps that I showed you for the recipes database. So you can either upload an image or you can grab one from the Unsplash free stock photo library. So that is how the ingredients page works. Now let's head over to the shopping list. So this is the shopping list. So as I said, when you click that add to shopping list button on the ingredients page, it will automatically add it into your shopping list. And what I would recommend doing is when you go shopping, you can open this page up on the Notion app on your phone. And as you place the items in your basket, you can check them off, they'll disappear from the list. And the really clever thing about this is that when you check an item off in the list, it will automatically be re-added back to your pantry on the ingredients page. So let me show you what I mean. So let's just go with this apple sauce as an example. So I'm going to check it off from our list because I've placed it in my basket. Let's go back to the ingredients page. And here is apple sauce. So as you can see, the status has now been changed back to in stock. So when you check the item off in your shopping list, it will automatically update this status back to in stock. So it's now back in your pantry. So I set this system up just because it's a really quick and easy way. So you don't have to change lots of different statuses and check lots of different things off whenever you go shopping. It's really simple. You add it to the shopping list with a single click. You go to your shopping list and when you actually buy the item, you can check it off again on the shopping list and then it will be re-added back to your pantry. So it's a really, really handy and clever system. Now, one issue that I found was that because this is a meal planner, you can only add the ingredients from the ingredients list to your shopping list, which is why I've added the non-food items tab because we all know that when we go shopping, we don't just buy food items. So I wanted a way for you to be able to add anything to your shopping list that wasn't gonna interfere with the ingredients database. So that's what this tab is all about. So any items that you want to add to your shopping list that aren't food, you simply want to come to this tab and just input them in here. So these are just some examples that I've got in here already. And it works similarly to the ingredients database that you have a status of in stock. You can add it to your shopping list or you can set it to don't need if it's just a one-off item. So to add something new to the shopping list that isn't an ingredient, you simply want to just click on the plus new button here, type in the name. So let's just say that I 
I need some conditioner and you can then change the status appropriately and if you need to add it to the shopping list again it works the same you add it to the shopping list it's now been moved down here into the shopping list tab and if we go into the shopping list these ones with the orange circle are the ones that are non-food items and it works exactly the same if you check it off it will then be moved back into the in stock category and that's it as I said earlier this meal planner template is available on my store so if you want to grab it and start using it straight away then check the link in the description box and if you did like this video then I would really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Notion tutorials every week.